All right, I want to give a warning here about this uh, comic book thing put out by No Greater Joy Ministries, uh, Michael Pearl. Um, found something in it that really, really is evil, very wicked. I, I found this thing years and years ago at a used bookstore down in, in uh, Ephrata, Pennsylvania. Here you have, I'll show it here, it's uh, Good and Evil, Part 1, The Beginning. And first of all, you have uh, the No Greater Joy there, right there. There's Michael Pearl's name. I don't know who these other two guys are. No idea. Let me just show you this thing here about Noah. And, you know, you can go through this. I'll just show you here quickly. Um, you know, has God told you that you cannot eat from every tree in the garden? He said He, we can eat of every tree except that one. But if we will, if we touch it, we will die. It's not even scripture. This is not even what the Bible says. All right. So they're just, you know, uh, you know, it is beautiful to look upon, and it does look like it would be good for food, and it will make me wise to eat it. But God ha said not to eat this fruit. She never said that. That's not recorded in scripture. Why are they doing this? This is this is ridiculous. You know, you know. Eve took the fruit to her husband and talked him into eating it. No, he didn't. No, 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 I don't think so. See, I didn't die. Eat, and it will make you wise also. No, 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 no. No, she ate of it. And the Bible says that Adam was not deceived. The woman was in the transgression. This is a total, complete lie. I'll tell you, it... it I'll show you the worst one. And then you make up your own mind. Here we have Noah. Noah became a farmer and planted grapes. It's not what the Bible says. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, the new world was lonely with just four families, but soon his sons were having children of their own. Noah discovered, look at this. I mean, this, is, this is blasphemy right here. This is satanic. Noah discovered that by putting fruit in a container and leaving it for a few weeks, it made an alcoholic drink that caused him to feel funny. Noah got to liking the drink so much that at times he couldn't work. He would just fall down unconscious. It made him do things that displeased God. What? <laughs> Excuse me? Genesis chapter 9. In the Bible. Not some satanic comic book. Genesis chapter 9 verse 20. And Noah began to be an husbandman and he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and was drunken and he was uncovered within his tent. Okay. Does it say anything at all about he, he learned how to make wine alcoholic and it, he liked the drink and it would, you know, he just, you know, he started to do things that displeased God. It doesn't say that. I believe in context here what happened is the atmospheric change of the world after the flood, all of a sudden that grape juice that would not have fermented back in the first, you know, the way that was before the flood, now all of a sudden he's like whoa, this thing makes him drunk, and he's going, he didn't try this on purpose. How do you know that? <clears throat> Verse 24, And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And it goes down through here. And, uh, well, let me, I, I need to read it. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Um, so you mean to tell me up here Noah is 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 in sin, okay? According to Michael Pearl, he's in sin. He got drunk on purpose. But here, as soon as he wakes up from his wine, God's speaking prophecy through him. No, it was a mistake that Noah made. He wasn't getting drunk on purpose. And to put that into a comic book, that's blasphemy. Because Noah spoke prophecy as soon as he woke up from that wine. Now, if he did it on purpose, if he knew how to get drunk and he was getting drunk on purpose, like this stupid comic book says, you know, I mean, I don't understand why a Bible believer would even write a thing like this. But if this, if this is the truth here, this picture here, I'll show it again. You know, he knew, he knew how to get drunk. According to Michael Pearl's comic book here, he knows how to get drunk and he wakes up and God goes, Oh, you know, down here it says he's displeasing God, but God speaks prophecy through a guy that's displeasing him. That's a bunch of junk right there. 
And I'll tell you what, you start messing with the Word of God, you start adding to and subtracting from it and things like that, you're playing with fire. You're playing with serious, serious fire. And worse than that, I was on their website the one time I was looking for something, and I saw that Debbie Pearl, Michael Pearl's wife, if you don't know that, uh, she came out with some new little uh, cartoon book or something like this, little children's book thing, and it was about integration. And she's like promoting Martin Luther King Jr. And I'm going, <laughs> Martin Luther King Jr., the infamous, you know, we are free at last uh, speech where he says about Catholics and Protestants coming together. We will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. This guy that was a, a, a just a drunken, fornicating communist, and he was, I'm not making that up. He was a wicked man, extremely wicked, integrationist. And she's writing a book for children about this wicked pervert. And Michael Pearl is adding to the scriptures. Oh, and they have a book on uh, sex too. You know, sex for Christian couples and stuff. Neither one of them have ever, you know, lusted and looked at pornography and stuff like that. Never masturbated or anything else before they got married. They were just pure and everything. But they write sex manuals now since they've been saved. I used to endorse the Pearls. And I hate to keep narrowing the list of who I can endorse and stuff, but good night, man. What am I supposed to do with a thing like that? I recommend this kind of junk and some new Christian comes along and gets messed up from it? Some new Christian comes along and gets the, one of the, their books and gives it to their children and it's, in, it's, it's promoting integration? Might Martin Luther King Jr.? Excuse me? So, <laughs> add another one to the list. I'm not going to re recommend the guy anymore. There's no way. I mean, I've had this thing for a while, and I was going to, uh, we were looking at this, we are getting, you know, going through trying, I was actually doing a study on the, the Chick uh, comic books, which I do recommend those, especially the ones exposing the Jesuits with uh, Alberto Rivera. But I was looking through them, and I was, I was trying to find the one and stuff, and I came across this, and I showed it to my wife, and I said, hey, check this out. So this one's by Michael Pearl. I bought it, and I never really read the thing, just, you know, for research. And we started looking through it. She started looking through it, and she's like, this is really far out. It's not what the Bible teaches. And I started looking through it, and I'm like, I, you know, I am going to be held accountable someday for who I recommend. And that's why I always go back to the Bible. Just back to the Bible. Brethren, what more do you need than this King James Bible? I mean, all men make mistakes. I understand that. You know, there's, there's men out there, uh, Peter Ruckman, Sam Gipp. I disagree with them vehemently in a couple of areas. Uh, most of their stuff is good. Uh, Doug Stauffer, another guy that I think a lot of his stuff is good. I'm sure I could find some disagreements with him. I mean, there's, there's people out there that, are, that my disagreements with them are not extreme major types of things. They're not things that I think it would, would really destroy a new believer. But you get this kind of stuff here. This is, this is changing God's word, bringing it out as a comic book, okay? And again, who's it targeting? The youth. Who's Debbie Pearl's book targeting? Children. So, I'm not endorsing them anymore. If you disagree with that, that's fine. That's your right. That's your privilege. Go ahead. Whatever. Uh, I, don't, I don't like to keep making, you know things and stuff like this, but you know, I'm going to, I'm going to warn people. I'm not going to, uh, do this little Laodicean thing of, uh, there's somebody and I can't say who it is because I want to protect the name. I name names and that's what I'm going to do. So, uh, I'd stay away from the whole Pearl thing and, uh, that's going to be that. Thank you for watching.